Welcome to Haunting Live Podcast, a place where we bring a new paranormal guest each episode to share their journey and experiences. Yeah, it's um, it's everything. Like like right now, I can feel her wondering, "What am I doing?" You know. So we do a podcast, and I have a radio show, and so she sits in there sometimes, and so I just send her images of us sitting in the studio, and then she knows what I'm doing, and she's comfortable, and she can go lay down. Visit our sponsor, the most gifted psychics. Call 866-228-2883 and mention code word HAUNTING LIVE to receive 10 minutes for just $10. 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Well, welcome to this episode of HAUNTING LIVE. Today we have Samantha Jones, psychic medium, joining us all the way from California, USA. Thank you very much for being here, Samantha. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm excited. Yeah, it's wonderful for you to join us here to talk a little bit about your background, what you do as a psychic medium, and some other specialties that you have. So, uh, first question I have for you, though, is what drew you into becoming a psychic medium, and uh, how did that happen for you? Sure. Uh, So, I've been an animal communicator my whole life. I didn't really know what I was doing, Um, but the psychic work and the medium work was different. I actually kind of developed those abilities out of the blue about five years ago. My mom passed away in 2004, and after she passed, I started building this relationship with her on the other side, where we learned, I learned how to communicate with her through music and numbers and all kinds of other things that she would send me. <clears throat> and then I met this medium who told me that I had these abilities. And I didn't really believe it at first, you know, um, the animal ones, yeah, but not so much the psychic and the, and the medium. Um, but I started like going on Facebook groups and just practicing in some of those groups. They're like uh, meant for that, you know, spiritual growth groups. And I was accurate on the people's posts about their loved ones that had passed away. And I was just blown away with the how how is that possible they must be lying to me they're just being nice you know and then my husband um, got out his uh, photo album from people that, that I had never met before our family that died before him and I even met and I was able to tell him things that I didn't he had never told me things that I couldn't possibly have known and it just kind of started from there and I was at the time I was doing pet sitting I own a pet sitting business And I really was getting older and didn't really want to do that so much anymore. And so this just kind of seemed logical. It seemed like this is a gift that I've been given and I should share it with other people because especially when it comes to animals and bringing people closer to their animals, but also after they pass away and giving them that, that healing, that grief healing and like knowing, going through what I went through after I lost my mom, I like to help people so that they can get through their grief faster because it took me so long I held on to it for so long so that's really what got me into it and what made me interested in in this line of work that's amazing that you realized you could do that and actually have that ability through a tragic event in your life but actually brought it forward for you to realize you actually have a gift as well so yes absolutely did you focus on that after you discovered you had the abilities of a psychic medium or was the next steps that you took after that to continue your practice? Oh, gosh, you know, I went through a spiritual awakening, which I never expected to go through. And it was very life changing. And it was kind of reexamining all of my beliefs. And so at the same time that I'm trying to learn how to be a psychic medium, I'm also going through the spiritual awakening. And it was tough. And I, I started almost immediately offering my services to people I started for free. And then as I got better, I started charging just small amounts and then created a website. And I have a Facebook group that I started um, probably about a year into it. I started the group and it has over 6,000 people in it now. And I do free readings in that group for people. Um, So I just started really like doing that kind of stuff, getting more experience and, and really working through the spiritual awakening at the same time too, because I think it's important when you um, are a psychic that you understand the way the universe works and um, allow yourself to heal from the things that you've been through. And I did a lot of shadow work and that really helped so that now it's not just like, I don't just do the psychic medium and the animal communication work. I also like to do spiritual counseling for people because I feel like, you know, a lot of people that are psychics or tarot readers, they will just tell you your future. They'll tell you what's going to happen next week. 
I like to not just tell you those things, but if there's something that we can work on to make it better to, you know, if, if there's a way to change something or, you know, something that'll bring progress or healing, I like to work on those kinds of things, not just here's what's going to happen. Well, you probably got that through your own experience of healing that you want to help others heal as well. So that, that makes sense. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, did you progress first to your animals then? Since you have an animal business, was it easier for you to sort of work on them first than other people or how did that start? Yeah, the animals, actually, I had been doing that a long time. I started doing that professionally when I was about, I don't know, 22, 23, but I didn't do it a lot. It wasn't something like there was no real big internet presence at that point. Everything we did was through like the phone book, you know, so it wasn't easy to get myself out there. So I didn't do it a lot. It was a, a more for family and friends and some of my pet sitting clients and stuff. So um, I had been doing that a long time. So then I, I went through a divorce and I, I moved back to California from Las Vegas and I didn't really want to use those abilities anymore because they're it makes you really attached to animals not that I could distance myself all the way, but but not doing the animal communication work, it was a little bit more peace of mind for me because if I would go somewhere and I would feel something from an animal, it would just kind of throw me off. You know, it would make me sad if there was something sad going on or, or whatever. So I stopped doing it. And then when these other abilities hit, I was like, well, it's all, I have to go back to doing that because animals are what my real passion is. And so I just that came back in and that's very, very easy and natural for me talking to the animals. It's like talking to humans. So can you share sort of an experience that you had with an animal when you first started discovering that you had the ability to actually hear them sure. talk to you? Was it kind of strange to you or? You know, it's not strange. Um, it, it's And it's not really like a talking. The very first time that I had this experience as an adult, when I started trying to learn about these abilities, I was working for the NSPCA as their education director. And there was a lady there that had a problem with her dog that she couldn't solve. And she didn't tell me anything about it, nothing at all, just the dog's name and gave me a picture of the dog. And that was it. And what I saw was this dog at the bottom of her bed, like, you know, on the ground, but at the bottom of the bed in the crate. And that's where the dog slept at night. And I just felt this feeling of like, I don't want to be in there. It wasn't like the dog said directly to me, I don't want to be in there. He, I could just feel it. It was, it, it's like this locked up kind of feeling where you just feel anxious and, and stuff. And so I told her, I think that he does, he's in this crate and he doesn't want to be in the crate. And she told me that I was accurate and that I was like blown away because I had never really done this for anybody before, you know? Um, so that was like my first professional type experience. It was pretty cool. So basically you go upon like feelings that you have for things you're sensing from the animal or do you more get like images that they're trying to show you? It's everything. Okay. It's everything. It's, um, it depends on what it is. So like, let's say I have an animal that's not feeling well and the owner asked me to do a body scan. So what I do is I get a picture of the animal um, sideways so that I can see the whole body. And then a lot of times it will come in different ways. So I might feel a headache, I might feel a stomach ache, or I'm just drawn to this one part of the animal where I just can't take my eyes off of it or whatever. So things come in that way. Um, there are words that I, I will get words, but that seems to be with the animals, the least that they use. It's usually the pictures. Like if I ask, what's your favorite toy? They'll show me. Um, when I connect to them for the first time, usually they are get very excited and they show me that they're excited and they will show me like if it's an animal that's passed away, they will show me how what their body did when they would get excited, like when their owner would come home so that I can tell the owner, this is what I'm seeing. Like they get down, you know, like the play or they run in circles or whatever it is the, the animals show me those types of things. So it's a little bit of everything. So like um, some when you read people too, like some psychic and mediums, they get the feeling or senses or they'll see things or see images. So I guess it's the same way with both animals and some people do psychic work the same way too. So Yes, exactly. I'd have yep. other animal communicators on our show in the past and I always wondered, okay, is it direct communication that they're actually speaking back and forth, like with words, so they're understanding what right. they want to say? Or is it just what they're feeling and getting from sensing their energy? So. 
Yeah, it's um, it's everything like like right now I can feel her wondering, what am I doing? You know, so we do a podcast and I have a radio show. And so she sits in there sometimes. And so I just send her images of us sitting in the studio and then she knows what I'm doing and she's comfortable and she can go lay down, you know, so it's it just but I can also say words to her, you know, or or, or to them. Um, yeah, it's I can send them messages anyway. It's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool. I had, uh, like I said, another animal communicator on in the past, and she was actually able to communicate with wild animals as well, which I thought was pretty interesting. So that was. I'll do cool. that. Yeah. Yeah. Is it different than domestic animals, or is it the same method? Oh, it's the same method, but it's not usually the same responses. It depends on the animal themselves. Um, there was one day I actually had a conversation with a hummingbird, and that was pretty cool that uh, I asked him, where do you live? And he showed me the tree that he lives in around here. And he showed me his nest and his little family that he lives in the tree with. And I said, what do you do all day? And so he showed me what his job is, is to go and like collect the nectar and bring it back and, and that they all have a job, you know, it's um, so that was his job. So that was one time where it was, it was just like having a conversation, but then there might be other times where like I try and communicate with something like a raven or a hawk or whatever. And it's almost like I feel like I'm being ignored or like they're actually going to their friends like, look at this human trying to communicate with me, you know. But I have communicated um, with also like I, where I live in Southern California, there's mountain lions and there's occasionally they will like roam into the streets and stuff. And there was one that was in the streets in the town over and she looked really sick. I saw a picture of her and I, I could tell that she was not well. And so I told her, they're going to help you. So you need to go back to where you were, you know, but people were worried she was going to hurt somebody. So I told her, just go to like walking on the street. Don't bother anybody. Just walk down the street and they're going to help you. And I actually told the wildlife, I messaged them and I said, look, this is what's going on. And I, I've told her, you know, and they got her, they got her like two days later. And unfortunately she was very sick and had to be euthanized. But I did tell her that too. I told her, you know, they're they're going to help you either way. It's you're going to be in less pain than you're in right now. So, so hopefully, I helped her to know that she was safe to find somebody. But yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing that you were able to actually communicate with a wild animal like a cougar and just say it's going to be okay. Just keep going, and we'll help you, kind of thing. So that's interesting. Yeah. The paranormal can happen at any time, so that's why our Etsy store is always open. Get your paranormal items from cleansing to protection to attraction. All available now on our Etsy store. Search Haunting Live. Okay, well let's move on to yeah. uh, mediumship now as the next topic. Aside from being able to communicate with animals, was it the same way you developed your animal communication developed into spirit and mediumship communication or how did you how did you experience that development that i worked on a lot that one was really hard for me to wrap my head around that i was not just talking like i talking to an animal that's right here makes sense to me talking to a spirit that i can't see and that i never knew makes absolutely no sense to me whatsoever so i had to prove to myself that this was actually what i was doing and so i practiced and i practiced and i practiced and um it was not as easy for me as the animals i would actually like when i started doing paid readings at the beginning like probably within the first year if somebody had uh like a, a spirit reading medium reading scheduled for me i would and i wasn't like prepared I, if i was nervous i would almost cry Be like I, I can't i can't i can't do this but the animals i never feel like that it's just so natural now i i feel different about it um i feel it feels natural to me you know but the animals still they do feel much more natural but I love the medium work. It's really interesting the way that spirits communicate. You know, they communicate way different than animals do. I mean, same kind of things, you know, pictures and all of that. But um, for me, at least with my medium abilities, I, I have a lot of like puzzles that I have to put together almost. Like they don't just tell me what it is. They make me kind of figure it out. Like there was this one day I was doing a reading for a lady whose son passed away. And all of a sudden I just saw his shoes and socks. That's all I saw were his shoes and socks. I have no clue what that means. What, you know, what does this mean? So I'm like, please don't think I'm crazy for saying this, but I just have this image of your son's shoes and socks. And she said, I keep them right next to my bed. How am I supposed to know that? 
you know, but why can't they just say that? Why can't they just say she keeps his shoes and socks next to the, the bed? You know, it's, it does it for me. It doesn't really work like that. Sometimes I'll get a feeling of something like, I'll just think, Oh wow. Okay. That's where his, his shoes are. They're, they're there next to her bed. Um, but most of the time it's not the actual words to me saying his shoes are next to her side of the bed. I wish it was, but I know a lot of psychics, they, they get names really well. Um, a lot of mediums, professional mediums. I'm not good with names. It's something that I hope that I will get better with over the years, but I don't, I don't know why. Well, there's different ways yeah, spirit perfect. does communicate with the medium on the other end. And sometimes they show it visually. Sometimes they show it other, other ways like feelings and whatever. You can sense something's there and like you can let the yes. person know, like I sense this or a smell or something like that too, right? So um, yes. just, I think it's all confirmation as well. Like it's confirmation for the reader as well as your sitter too. So like, yes. and and yourself too, because them doing it that way it's confirming that you are correct so yes absolutely uh would you like to share any other experiences that you've had when communicating with spirit any weird oh, things boy. happen <laughs> I, I have a lot i wish that i would have written them all down because i have a list um when i first started and i was really i was nervous about the whole thing i wasn't exactly sure how this even worked you know like I use pictures to bring people's loved ones in. But as far as like me just feeling people out of nowhere, I wasn't exactly sure how that was going to feel. And I was doing pet sitting still at the time. And I had this client who um, their son had passed away. And during the initial consultation, they showed, they showed me his picture and said he had passed away and, and you know, all that. Well, the first time I went into the house to take care of the animals after the people left, I open the door and he like says, boo. And he says, aren't you scared? And I said, scared of what? And he says, the house is haunted. I said, what are you talking about? The house is haunted. And I go and, and turn the light switch, flip the light switch and the light bulb, you know how like when a light bulb goes out, it does that poof thing. That's what it did. And he started laughing so hard at me because I got nervous about that. The light bulb would poof. He's like, I'm not going to hurt you. It's all in good fun. You know? But I was not expecting that at all. I, I was so like, what just happened? <laughs> you know, and you you like question your own sanity. Like, did that really just happen? Did that spirit really just do that? Or am I just, you know, it was it was pretty cool. I've had some really um yeah, cool spirit experiences. My mother is probably gives me some of the best experiences. Um, because she's very specific with using her name a lot of times. And we have uh, different things that we use for each other. So my husband and I went to this thing called the Magic Bus. And it was like a 420 event. And um, there was all kinds of different themed rooms. And there was one room that was just completely covered in white paper. And they gave you crayons and you could like write on the walls. But it wasn't just the walls. It was like the chairs were covered in paper, the the tables, everything. And there were also two guys walking around that were covered in paper. And so my husband's writing on the wall and I'm looking around where to write. And one of the guys in white, he comes over and he takes my hand and he leads me over to this shelf. And I swear to God, my sister says this, if I'm lying, I'm dying. Right there was my mother's name, Linda written in purple, which was her favorite color, and a unicorn drawn in green. And unicorn is something that we use. It's just, you know, a happy symbol. But purple was her favorite color, but green was another color that I associated with her because we used to live in an apartment when I was little with green green walls and green carpet. And so it was like a running joke with us. So it just blew my mind, not just that that Linda and that unicorn were there, but that the guy literally brought me over to it and was like, look, this has been waiting for you all day. It was crazy. I've had a lot of experiences like that. A lot. Yeah. Like a lot of weird instances that just don't make sense to you at the time, but they you don't. And it feels it out after. Yeah. It like feels like coincidence sometimes. And you're like, there's, there's no way there's no way that's a coincidence. So. No, that's strange. Like was the writing already there and the guy knew it was for you somehow yep. or like did you figure out anything else about it or you know the the only thing that i can think is that maybe he had the same kind of abilities and he just felt the need to take me over there but when i told him because i i told my husband come over and look at this 
And I told the guy, I said, that's my mom's name. And she's passed away. And, and he's just nodding like he knows. And I'm like, what the, you know, <laughs> he, it's like he knew. I mean, maybe he did. I, I, I don't know. But yeah, yeah it sounds I like he has surprised. some abilities. Like he's probably a medium too. And already knew she was, she could have been talking yeah. to him before you. So <laughs> he could have been the one to draw that. Absolutely. It was, it was pretty cool. How do you work day to day with mediumship then? Is it something that I know you do it for your clients? Uh, is it something that you continuously work at or do you feel you've reached a point now where you're more comfortable with it and you can actually help your clients out and stuff day to day? Oh yeah, I'm definitely more comfortable with it. Uh, it's now become a normal part of my life where this is just what I do. I, I can feel the spirits around me a lot during the day and, and um, communicate with them throughout the day just for myself. And so that it doesn't, it's not as hard for me to do the readings for people anymore. Uh, I love doing it. Uh, and it's really very healing. That's what really helped me to get through my mom's passing was a medium. And that's an interesting story I can, I'll share with you real quick too, is uh, I had seen this psychic probably three years before my mom died. My mom actually had had a reading from her too. And, um, but I didn't have her number. I lost her number. I didn't even really think of hiring a medium for whatever reason. It didn't occur to me. And I was having a really hard time. And one day the, that psychic just called me out of the blue. And she said, I'm back in Las Vegas. I didn't even know she left. Like, I'm back in Las Vegas if you need a reading. And I was like, okay. And my, I had a dog that was having some issues at the time. So I was like, okay, well, yeah, I'll have her read for my dog, you know, and then maybe there's some other things she can tell me. And as soon as we started, my mom just comes in and starts telling her, you know, this, I'm her mom, I'm here, here's some things to validate. She started talking about my birds and we were able to heal and we both had some things we needed to say. And we did, we said them. And I felt so much better and so much different after that day. So now to be able to do that for other people is very, very rewarding. So I think that I had to go through that too in order for me to be able to help my clients the way that I can, you know, because I can empathize with them on a level that you can't if you haven't been through a, a traumatic loss like that, you know. No, it's hard for both of them. Like when you lose somebody, it's so hard. And if you lose a pet, it's even the same. So it's difficult yes. to get through. And it is odd. Like I don't think the average person thinks of going to a medium to get help with something like that. Um, I think they might yeah. think of that later on, you know what I mean? Like, say, after they started healing, they say, well, maybe they can help talk to my right. passed on pet or my loved one or whatever. And But to yeah. think of it afterwards, you don't think of it as a healing process to go and start right away to start that healing. Yeah. So um, what would you recommend to somebody maybe that's lost a pet or lost a, a loved one that maybe is struggling like you were in the, in the first part of your that happening um one of the big things that i've learned is that i carried the grief around too long i prolonged it myself and the, they don't want us to do that our loved ones our animals they don't want us to do that and so i try and tell people when you experience that kind of loss grieve it's you need to you need to grieve but don't drag it on by dragging it on yourself so like i listen to every sad song every day that reminded me of my mom constantly. I thought that that made it better for her. I was thinking I'm, she's on the other side. I wasn't thinking this is such a beautiful place where she can now do whatever she wants and, you know, communicate with me. I was thinking of this as she's not here anymore. She, and so she's not here. So I'm not supposed to be happy. And so I definitely wasn't happy for like a good three years. And so now that I can communicate with them and I see what's actually going on, that is one of the things that I say to people the most is do your best not to drag this on and on because they don't want that. Feel the feelings that you need to feel as much as you need to, but don't drag it on and on. They really don't want that. They want us to be happy. We're supposed to be, live our lives and be happy while we're here because it, it goes by so fast, you know? It, much faster than we even realize. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For Way sure. too fast. Like some days it drags on, but you think it's it's only one day, but then you look at it through your lifetime and you're like, wow, that has gone by fast and you're going through half your life yep. before you know it. So, uh, Well, thank you so much, Samantha, for coming on. I appreciate you taking your time Ooh. today and talking to us at Haunting Live about your 
mediumship journey and some experiences that you've had throughout it and uh, how you help your clients day to day. So if there's somebody that wants to reach out to you and can get some help either with animals that they have or a loved one, uh, how can they help? How can they contact you? Sure. You can find me at Samantha Jones, psychic medium.com. And I apologize for them. Uh, and I have a radio show that airs every Wednesday. So you can find that on the website. And then my husband and I have a podcast together as well. And that's also on the website. So everything's right there. Samantha Jones, psychic medium.com. For sure. I'll have to check that out and see what your podcast show is all about and check it out for sure. And I'll share it as well to our group as well on Facebook and help you out there too. So, but thank you. It was lovely meeting you. And uh, thank you so much for coming on Haunting Live. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Miss one of our episodes? We play your episodes on Rhode Island Broadcasting. Wednesdays at 10 p.m. EST. Show your support for Haunting Live by supporting our broadcast partner, Rhode Island Broadcasting. Find them on YouTube. The paranormal can happen at any time, so that's why our Etsy store is always open. Get your paranormal items from cleansing to protection to attraction. All available now on our Etsy store. Search Haunting Live.